All right, so here we are. We're at uh, we're at Shortways Barn, and I got to tell you, this is has to be this this is for me. It's the pinnacle of doing the Towncast. This the story, and having you guys here. Uh, you know, we, we had Mike on earlier, but but the, the, the whole story behind this, and and to have it in such an iconic place, the Shortways Barn here in Hawthorne. Uh, I, I first of all, I want to welcome the entire O'Hagan clan. Here and, and and Tom Gorman and especially Mary Bowler. Uh, this is if you guys if you guys haven't seen this already. There's a book that came out called I Call My Mother Mary. Uh, it is it's to me it was a love story. I know a lot of you guys have read this, and it's it's just it's just such a beautiful story of, of, of heartbreak and and of, of hope and of faith and of love. It's just an amazing story. I couldn't be more happy to have the author, Tom, Tom Gorman, thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having us, yeah. And, and, and to have uh, Mary, Mary Bowler, who is, is Mary. I called her Mary. This is the Mary who they called, Mary. Mary. Right, you could ask for anything better than that. Uh, so, I, I, again, I want to thank you so yeah, much for, you. For, for coming and doing this, flying all the way from, from uh, Chicago. I can't believe we're actually going to be on the same flight yeah. yes, tomorrow are. going back. And this is, so, so we're recording this during the blizzard, okay? Right. Nothing <laughs> stops the O'Hagan, okay? Right. And, and not only that, but what you guys don't see is about the hundred other <laughs> O'Hagan. Let's hear it for the O'Hagans, everybody. <laughs> right? This is the, the O'Hagans and fans and friends of O'Hagans and the Shortways, and, and the, the, the restaurant is full. Uh, I encourage you guys, if you haven't been down to Shortways, like one of our, our one of, you know, Bang here has never been to Shortways. I mean, what? come on. Uh, <laughs> you know, make sure you come down. This is, this is uh, it's an iconic place, and I couldn't be happier to have an iconic family here. Uh, I, I knew the O'Hagans growing up in high school. I, I was a junior when the senior class won state champs, Ooh. right? Hawthorne High School football hey, state hey, champs, hey. right? And then, and then, you know, and then I, th I felt like I felt like there were like 50 of you guys. There were so <laughs> many. So I want to go. I want to start over here. I want you to introduce yourself, and then we'll go all the way around and introduce the rest of the O'Hagans. I'm Jim. I'm the middle uh, son. What year did you graduate high school? Uh, 81 high school. Hawthorne High School. Hawthorne high school. Class of 81. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and I had Spanish class together. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes. I remember you speaking with, uh, what's her name? Miss Mata? Miss Mata. Yeah. Uh, you remember that? Of course. I remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, uh, you spoke Italian. Yes. So you and she were able to kind of communicate a little bit in Spanish. Sí, claro. Uh, Para, para mí es, es fácil. Muy bien. Yeah. Vamos a la biblioteca. I'm uh, Pat O'Hagan, class of 82. I took Spanish one twice in high school. Nice. You were that good at it. They made you repeat it. Geometry three times. It was, was, you formed the triangle. I was a freshman when Mike was a senior, Jim was a sophomore, when you were a Junior. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah, so you yeah. so you were all everybody the whole family was right in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh Michael Hagen, class of seventy nine, Hawthorne. Can't thank you enough, Flavio, for doing this. Um, this has been a uh, an absolute unbelievable change of all of our lives and I, I, we call it the big exhale for my mom. Uh, mm -hmm. this has just been such a uh, a momentous occasion for all of us to have to have Mary in our lives and we feel like she's been with us. It's only been 12 or 13 years, but it feels like it's been forever. She's wonderful, and it's just uh, it's just fantastic. And, and thank you so much for everything you're doing for us. Well, and thank, thank you, Dr. Lecter, for getting this. <laughs> Dr. Lecter. <laughs> oh, boy, I got that. Well, thank you, Mike. And if you guys haven't heard the, the Michael Hagen, Michael Hagen, you know, he was the first bridge between Hawthorne and Glen Rock. So we had we had Michael Hagen on the town cast and, you know, grew up in Hawthorne, graduated Hawthorne High School, then moved up, you know, moved up All to right. Glen Rock. <laughs> you know, and then we came town council, was a football coach at, at uh, Glen Rock High School, competed against Hawthorne High School, which we don't want to go into. Uh, but uh, thank you for, for putting all this together and, and for, for bringing this story to light. Because if it wasn't for your post of this book, I would have never known about it. No one here would have ever known about it. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, Margaret O'Hagan Gorman, and I graduated Hawthorne in 1987. And you would have been a Margaret Junior if they did that kind of thing, right? <laughs> right yeah. Yes, 
I'm Margaret Allen. My mom's Margaret Mary. She's yeah. really, yeah, Mary Margaret. There's a lot of Margaret's. A lot of Margaret's, Marys, Patrick's. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an exactly. Irish. It's an Irish thing. Exactly. Not that creative with names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's five names. Five in, there's five names in the whole I, in all of That's Ireland. It. That's it. Uh, so so and then we moved to Mary. I'm Mary Bowler. I was able to graduate in 1973. Uh, <laughs> I know you know how old I am. So um, in uh, Wheaton, Illinois, and uh, I uh, I can't believe this has happened to my life. It's uh, it's been such a gift. Um, I, I, just a real short one when I when I came the very first weekend, someone came up to me and they said, "You know what? I've been trying to get in the O'Hagan's family for years, <laughs> and you step off a plane." <laughs> I go, hey, hey! It's been that easy for 13 years. So now there I, was before we get to Tom and into the story. There was another story about when you guys went to Newark, someone else stepped off a plane. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> We were, we were waiting, this is a long time ago, we were waiting for Mary to come off the plane pre-COVID and uh, we're in Newark Airport Friday night, every seven minutes something from Newark's coming, no, sure. Newark, Newark, Newark's coming in, right? So we're getting more and more tense and excited and all of those emotions and Pat like <laughs> jumps over the line and run up some, and picks up this lady and gives her a hug and says, hey, uh, is this her? And obviously it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it just broke the whole tension. Then two planes later, Mary came in, and it was. Uh, it's been it's been an unbelievable left lane, hundred miles an hour ever since. Yeah. Anyway, All right. Great. So now we're now we're gonna go to Tom. So Tom. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Ridgewood, and we still live there right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you, you're a lifelong. What year did you graduate high school? I graduated in 87. Shout out to class of 87. Uh, I was the youngest guy at the table. Is that what he's saying? That's yeah. uh, sad. So. <laughs> I'm 87 too, but he's younger. Uh, right, there you go. But just barely. Barely. <laughs> so, so what was... I mean, were you were you a, were you a writer? What was your what was your background? So, so I, I was a high school principal of Ridgewood High School, and, oh, okay. and now I'm superintendent. And uh, my background is I was a history major, so I just had this, you know, in my I guess in my blood for a long time, and always been interested in, in this stuff. I've written some professional articles for education and stuff, but nothing stuff to, that no one reads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But nothing like this, you know, nothing like this. <laughs> so, Thank goodness. It's just, you know, but this just this story told itself, and that's what we were talking about. You know, yeah. it's so authentic, and it was such an opportunity. You know, and everybody kept on saying, "Someone's got to write this down. Someone's got to write this down. Give it to Oprah." You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh, then we started just chronicling the the. And everybody had the different stories, and I just started putting them together. In about over five years, because you know the job gets in the is way. Is that how long? Is that how long? Yeah, you know, the job, family, all these different things happen. So uh, I had to interview Mary. I had to interview Peg for the, you know, and put it all together. And then over a couple of years, we were able to put this together into a book. But the book was originally just for the family. It was yeah. just like you know, put it together. We could share it with the grandchildren and everything like that. But as people knew the story, they started saying, well, "Can I get a copy? Can I get a copy?" And then we just launched this uh, the week before Christmas, and it's been taken off. So, so when did you guys get married? 1996. I won't put him on the spot. I know. I, I knew that. You see how quickly he deferred. I knew like, the same. When, when did you guys get married? Yeah. <laughs> Met in '94. Married in '96. '96. All right. So, so when did you first learn about the story and about the history? Mar Margaret's history. Well, I mean, you guys could jump in, but this is a little bit more. It was a secret for a long time, so I, I didn't find out about it until when Mary came on the scene. Almost. My my mom told me when I was 20 about about Mary, and I was going through some stuff, and um, and as the amazing mother that she is, she kind of shared that story to ease my pain and share her pain. So what did, what did she share with you at that she time? She basically said, um, you know, Margaret, I went through stuff too, and I had a baby at, at 18, and I had to give her up. And it was the hardest thing I ever had to do, but I made it through. And it obviously snapped me right out of my own stuff and put it in perspective. And then, but I was the only one that knew. My, my father knew. She told my father, obviously. Uh, but my brothers didn't know that story. And so she just shared she just that shared with you. She shared that with me at that moment wow. to help me ease my pain like she always did. And That's um, what moms do, man. Moms, she's just the greatest. The beauty of moms are Absolutely. just... Absolutely. And, um, and then through that journey, we always I would always ask her. And then, then she would kind of confide in me about certain stuff of what happened. And we would talk about it. And I would say, do you want to tell the boys? And she was just so guilt-ridden with the Irish Catholic guilt that she did something wrong. And I would try to talk her out of it, but she wasn't ready to share that. But I would ask her, I go, do you want to find her? Maybe you and I we can find her. And she's like, 
it's not my place to find a martyr. I just pray for her every night that she's okay. And then uh, there was always a hole in mommy's heart, always a hole in her heart, especially around the holidays. And um, But you know, she was away from her family. We always knew that, but we didn't know the depth of it. And yeah. then I knew it, and then... So you knew it at the age of 20, she shared it with you. I did know it at the age of 20. When did, when did she share it with the boys? It was always like um, a hint of something that yeah. was happening, or that something was out there, but she never really fully came through with it. She would kind of hint, hint around things, <clears throat> She and Mick came back from the Golden Steer yeah. some nights with maybe, you know, having a little too much fun. She would hint about certain <laughs> things, but it was never really spoken, you know. Uh, so it never really came out until when we went to Ireland yeah. together. Yeah. Tom organized an amazing family trip for us to go to Ireland. In 2008. In 2008. April of 2008. I stink with dates. So 2008, we all went, and we went out one night, and Mom kind of opened up to us. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. yeah so it opened up that I had a baby and, you know, was really starting to get emotional about it. And, of course, we just poured a ton of love on her about it. And that kind of... That was a year before old. we met Mary. So we did yeah. this family per six pilgrimage. Months, baby. Six, six months, baby. Six months. Yeah. yeah. So 2008, Mary. really? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's when you guys first that's realized... Really yeah. The whole story. I, I was not there for that. I didn't know until later on. Yeah. So really? really? So, so you got you, you guys both knew? Yeah. I mean, like Jim said, you always kind of knew something was up from how my mother left Ireland. Yeah. And I always remember how my father would speak of how she left Ireland. So there was always something there. So um, there were holes. There were holes yeah, in the story. So. And Dad was kind of chapped about how she was treated there. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so obviously being really de defensive of her. So he was... He, there was always like a little animosity there, right? yeah, and we always that. felt we always and again, you know, you look back and we always we always felt like, oh well, Daddy's not supporting Mom, but meanwhile, that's all he's doing. Right. And but you know, again, as we get older, as I shared with you earlier, as we get older and it's revealed, and as a as a mother, as a wife, and you see like the protection of him, we used to be like, well, he's not, you know, he's yeah. not supporting Mom, and meanwhile, right, right. that's all that's he all was he doing did. without it was, saying it. It was the complete it. opposite. It was the yeah, complete yeah, opposite. Yeah. But yeah, so 2008 was when we basically got revealed. In March. And then that yeah, that April of 2008, and then she went to Ireland that July of 2008. Really? And, yeah, on her on her pilgrimage, and went to Sean Ross Abbey, and that's when that whole pursuit of the nuns at Sean Ross Abbey started pursuing our mother. Because I, I describe Ireland as like is like Hawthorne. It's like, oh, do you remember Flavio? Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, every, the whole yeah. country is literally right. like There's nine Hawthorne. people, and everybody yeah, knows everybody. everybody knows <laughs> and again, correct me if I'm wrong, Max, because then that's the nun. My our aunt, my mom's sister, still lived in Ireland. So word got around that the nuns at Sean Ross Abbey were looking for Peggy Holland, which is my mom. And then they got to my, my our aunt Nellie, and then Nellie's the one that called my mom in America and said, I think Mary's looking for you. Yeah, it's because, amazing. Because because when that was the nuns, revealed. The nuns, yeah, the nuns at Sean Ross Abbey are asking about you. And then that was like August of 2008. And then September of 2008 is when we would always, the six of us, my brothers and my mom and dad would always sit down at the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. This time it was in the, in the living room. We had our, our family meet like of what's going on and do we want to do this? And I remember Pat saying like, we were, we were defensive and protective of mommy as always. And then we were basically like, well, F it, nobody's screwing us up. Nobody's breaking us up. So if we're all strong enough and mom and dad were okay to do it, and we were okay, and that was kind of when Michael found out. So it was it was hard on Michael because he was like, I remember his line was, "Oh, I'm not the oldest." You know, like, yeah. How was how how was that for you? It was it was uh, it was fine. It was better. It, it was I to everything everybody said. My mom had that hole, and now the hole was full. And again, but did you feel did you feel like there was you know growing up? Did you feel like there was that? Uh, you know what? I, I just well, you said it a lot. I hope you felt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, just happy that 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 we were able to bring it all together. You know, it was weird. I mean, it was weird. Yeah, because, yeah. And again, I was protective of my mom. Yeah. Like I, I don't know who this Mary woman is. I'm not. You know, what, yeah. what, what, what's what's her gig? Why all of a sudden out of nowhere right. is she calling up trying to find Peg? Yeah, well, yeah. You know, my job as as the oldest, as the oldest. is to make sure my mom's okay. Right. Everything else is secondary. And yeah. then we met her, and it's like. Ah. I, I was totally 
or on the wrong path that time, but at the time when I found out, I felt it was my responsibility to take care of my mother. Right. Yeah. And it's just, like I said, it has been such a godsend. And she's my best friend. She is, she's now, there's, there's not four of us, there's five of us. Absolutely. And, and when, you, when you think about this, this secret that she's kept for so many years, and, and the, the turmoil just within herself of holding on to this and, and, and concern for all you guys, obviously. Uh, and then and to finally be able to reveal it to you to help you get through it and then and then reveal it to you guys. Uh, so I, I want to talk about you, Mary. If so, I may, Flynn, one other thing. Yeah. The, the, the hero in this whole thing is is our father. Okay, because when, when we... Finally, dads get a, get acknowledgement. <laughs> it's always when, about the moms. When we, set, we, when we set all this up, we were in the kitchen, and my dad was in the funny room, took the phone and went into the funny room. People know the I love that you call room. it the yeah. funny room, by the way. So, I love that. It's in the uh, book. So, I love yeah, that. So I was in the kitchen when Mary called, that this was going to be the first call. Okay, so my dad's like, hi, Mary. It's Mick. So happy for you. Everything's good. This is going to work out fine. And I'm standing there listening to my father talk to my sister. And again, a whole different dynamic also is going to enter. And I'll, to, the day I, to the day I die, I'll never forget my father saying to Mary, everything's going to be fine. I prayed for you every day. I'm like this. If you think my dad was a cool guy, yeah. forget about it. Yeah. He was the best. And yeah. that right there, to Margaret's point, realized what he had done all those years to protect his wife, our mom, yeah. and now all of a sudden, now he's protecting Mary. Everything's going to be fine. I pray for you every day. Let's go. I, I, I read that awesome. in the book, and, awesome. and to, 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 you know, when you, when, you, when you read through the book, and guys, I highly recommend you go online, pick up a copy of I Called Her Mary, and, and listen, we're going to have a book signing. Right here at Shoreways, March 13th. Write this in your calendar. March 13th at 1 o'clock. I know I didn't tell you guys this, but I told Tom this. I told Tom. He knows. He's the author. You guys don't matter. But 1 o'clock, March 13th, to celebrate St. Patrick's and to celebrate this amazing, amazing story. Uh, we're going to do this book signing. And you, and you can come and you can talk to Tom. And, and hopefully we can get some of the other O'Hagans here. But when, when I was reading through this... And I, I read things, just small things like that, like when going through that and, and holding on to that and protecting your mom for all those years, and then in one moment saying to Mary, uh, see, I'm going to get emotional. I know, okay. I know, I'm fighting it. I prayed for you every day for 50, how many years? 52, 50, almost 53. 52 years. I prayed for you every day. So, so I want to talk to you, Mary. Oh, no. so. <laughs> Don't make me follow them. So, so, so one thing I want to say yeah. about that, right? So when this came to light and everybody's talking about my mom and this and that, I remember we're, I was in the living room with my father, just my dad and I, and I was like, how are you with this? Right. How are you with Yeah, this? I think that was in the book. Like, are you yeah. okay with this? Because at the end of the day, you know, my, my concern was with my sister was, what is her intention here? Like if she's gonna call and say, throw a guilt trip on my mother, we tell her to go shit in her hat and be on her way. Right. And that was not what it was, which was beautiful. Yeah. And I remember talking to my father about it, saying, Dad, how are you okay with this? Right. You know? And he's like, absolutely. He was like, first of all, like, thank you for asking me that. Right. But yes, because now, and then, like Mike said, it was the big exhale. It was literally like a five, the 500 pound gorilla was yeah. lifted off my mother's yeah. chest and her Absolutely. shoulders yeah. when it was like, you know, and I, and I remember the first time myself speaking to Mary and telling her that I loved her and I could hear the hesitation. I'm like, hey, that's how we do it. You're in. We know about you now and you're in and we love you. And without you, none of this none exists. Of this that's here. right. Yeah. Without you, my mother stays in Ireland. She doesn't come here. So yeah, it none of it truly is That's truly true. is an amazing blessing. For and, and you know, and, our guardian angel. I always refer to her as our guardian angel. You guys. And God, God bless your mom for for sharing the story because there's so many people's stories that they take right. to their grave, right. mm -hmm. and they're never revealed and they're never discussed. So you know, one of the hopes of this kind of book is to encourage people. It, it doesn't matter how difficult the story is. You know, family's family. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you guys are testimony. You're at this table because you love each other, and and you know, and you love Mary, 
and 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 you love short ways. No, no, no. You're, you're exactly right. Dines that's not that's, that's a close one and two. Yeah. <laughs> but as much as we, we know, short ways a lot longer than marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's very true. Close. That's very true. <laughs> but but as like you said, the, the story short almost didn't come to life. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I asked her several times. We talked about it. And everybody said it would be great, but she didn't want to tell the story. And unfortunately, it was what, after, what was it? When was the moment? Where it was. She said, it was unfortunately after you know Mick died, her husband, when he passed, that she finally felt not guilty telling the story. She didn't ever want to betray him and betray his so love. She was almost protecting she him. Was. All these she was. She was, absolutely. So we were sitting in the basement. Uh, Christmas Eve was always the O'Hagan gathering. And, you know, I, I kind of badgered her one extra time because I was getting tired. If she didn't want to tell the story, then we we're just going to put it to rest. But she finally said yes. And then we started recording right after that. And I love that. I love because you wrote that in the book. And, and again, guys, it's called I Called Her Mary. You know, look it up online. I, I really encourage you guys to pick this book up. And, and that's what I loved is that you were persistent enough to, to have her tell the story. And, and there, were, you know, there were times with my mom, my, my dad being the youngest of 13, growing up really poor in Sicily, never, never shared stories of when he was a kid. It was so, it was so traumatic to him. He just he, he wanted to get out. He got out. And so he never really shared those stories. Right, right. Uh, my mom, who grew up in, in war-torn northern Italy during World War II, you know, was, was a little more open to sharing stories, you know, and, and sharing how, you know, she had to go away from her parents for almost two years, mm. you know, just and live with her grandparents. Right. And, you know, you're a kid. You don't know why. Why? Right, 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 right. You know, right. and, 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 and that's why I encourage people to, if you have these stories, if you have, don't, don't harbor, don't hold them in. Because, like you said, all of a sudden a weight's lifted, and you felt that with your mom, right? Oh my God! When she 100%. finally told the story, how was that? When finally it was open, and you were able to talk about it? She, it was a. I mean, again, I, I was with my mom every day. Our mom every day. She helped me with my children, and you know, when I went to work, like she was our caretaker. You know what I mean? Like she took care of our kids, and the difference was so significant because I saw it every day to be able to talk about it, to be able to have an outlet and to be able to just like, you know, that's what I would say to her. I'm like, mommy, this is like the gift from God. I always would say, I'm like, it would be like, it was that test of like, this is gonna really suck for a long time, but I promise you, you're gonna go to America and you're gonna find the greatest man and you're gonna have children that love you and support you endlessly. And then to have the gift of my sister like, confirm all of her doubts and fears and exactly why she made that bravest decision. It's just the greatest gift that she could have ever have gotten that she did the right thing through her whole life. Yeah. So it was it was a um, it, it did definitely uh, make her whole again. Yeah. It definitely did. And, and just going back to you, the story was almost not told even on Mary's side. So Mary, you know, if mm. you want to just jump in. Mary didn't search until after your parents yeah, for yeah, the same mom. reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, go ahead. Yeah. So that's thing. what I wanted to talk. My, my parents, uh, my dad not as much, but my mom was very, very. Uh, she's very tentative about telling me. Actually, uh, a kid on the block told me, "You're, you know, you're adopted, and your parents aren't." Oh really no! Your parents. Uh, like a bully? <laughs> that, well, yeah. I took What's care. their name? Give me their name. <laughs> Listen, guys. We got him. We got him. We got him. All right. I just want to no, all that's all you have to do is tell the boys. You can't believe the connection I have. <laughs> My friends are He went, he went fishing in Lake Michigan. Yeah, he's still fishing. <laughs> so I went running home and all that stuff, and I was crying. And Mom was very, very... How, um, how old were you? I was eight. Eight, okay. Yeah, so they didn't have a chance to tell me in the way they wanted to. Yeah, yeah. But I never, ever, ever felt... In any, after they told me I was born in Ireland, oh, I, I use that all the time. They go, uh, anyone have to, uh, we're all, everyone's from Illinois right here, from the United States and stuff, and I go, not me. <laughs> I was born in Ireland, <laughs> and then I'd sit back, you know, it's like, it was a, so it's a badge of, of honor. It was, but uh, one time I was sitting with my mom, and we were watching a show about a girl that wanted to find her, her birth mom, and mom was very, very scared. She thought, you know, she told me too much, you know, that I'd be, uh, I, I would go away and I would find her and I would leave. You know, we really didn't talk as much, but that was the feeling. Yeah. You know, so I, I respected her also. And when I lost her in 98, um, it was about 10 years later, uh, my, my brother came in and said, I found this envelope. I mean, this is just so freaky that he found the envelope at our house that my dad had all the stuff in. It's my dad's handwriting and everything. And I go, what is that? He goes, I don't know. I found it, you know, in a, in a drawer. That was every single thing, my, my baptism, my 
passports. Oh. And I guess it's all in the book. Yeah, yeah. 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 I saw that. It was, yeah. and again, that was We're just in Holland, and I go, oh man, I wonder if I'm related to that soccer player that plays for Ireland. <laughs> all that stuff, you know. And then that's what we used. And, and as Michael's, how old were you at that time? At that time, let's see. How old I'm, 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 um, I'm 37, man. Yeah, because I was 40, so you were like 37 42, when mom. Yeah, oh. yeah, 37, yeah. something like that. So I thought, oh my gosh. So that's that's when it started tugging when a little bit. When it started tugging, I said, you know what? I felt my parents led me to these guys because I've left you, you know, early, and you still got a lot of life to go on. They saw my two kids, but I really felt that after I met them, and I said. They wanted me to find so someone would be there for me as I grew, you know, and our kids grew. Yeah, yeah. They picked, they did a good job. They picked the right people. Are, so, are your parents still alive? No, they are not. Oh, both, both of them both are passed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, so, but were they supportive when it, when you started? They never. I, it was like after they had passed. Oh, they the after they had passed. That whole yeah. guilt yeah. again that you know yeah. didn't want to betray the family and the love. Right, until right. So they passed. Then you start looking. Yeah, so it was really key is my husband. My husband Tom was. <laughs> Tom. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I'm a teacher. Again, so, that's yeah. the five names right there. <laughs> right, right. Five so, Irish names. Because right. I know Michael uh, had said to Tom, the two people that made this work is my father and you. My husband just just fell apart on that. So yeah. it was him, and he said, we're going. We're going to Ireland. We're going to Cork. We're going to go to your, to um, San Ross Abbey. We are going to find your mom. You know, and so he, he did everything. We went on with my kids. It was our last trip as a family, really, till they went off and wanted to do more other things. It was unbelievable. And sister, sister Mary, again, helped us. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And the sister that I had heard from research was blocking the adoptees. Her name was Sister Sarton. And, she was uh, blocking. She was blocking when you would come and say you wanted to know some more things. Oh, okay. She would say, well, well, you know, really, really a, a block. All of a sudden, I said, you know, uh, Sister Mary, I was wondering where Sister Sarton is. She's usually supposed to have, she's on sabbatical this week, the week I was there. Wow. So, got her out of the way. And then we went with uh, Sister <laughs> nice. Mary, and she was hoping that Mom was still in Ireland, and that I'd find her. Um, and it was the last time we were in Dublin, and she called, and she goes, we haven't found her yet, do you want us to pursue it? And I said, absolutely. You know, just call me. Wow. <laughs> and, and the funny, th well, not funny, but the, the ironic thing is, they both thought they were. Uh, both Peg Ireland. thought, you know, her daughter was still in Ireland, and, and, and Mary thought she was still in yes, Ireland. Yeah. And meanwhile, they're both in New Jersey. Oh, so when you they found out, she goes, "You're in freaking Jersey, <laughs> Jersey." <laughs> like, you I can know, get there by plane. Yeah. It's just like you know, you don't know that until it all comes together. You know? Yeah. It's fascinating. So, so when when you finally found out, what what, what was it? Was there a phone call first? Oh uh, yeah, I found out at about six in the morning sister called and said are you sitting down Mary and I go sister sister Mary like that and she said uh, I think I found your mother and I go what and this was July to you know September I mean she found her in, in like month. in a month yeah. or almost wow. you know so I was like oh, you're kidding she goes no I go where does she live <laughs> like that she goes New Jersey. I go. What? <laughs> I go. Oh my gosh. I go. And so we were talking. Yeah, well, what happened is really is I got on the phone with Mick. He had like 20 questions for me. Tom had given some sample. Too, I think. He goes, "Are you married?" I go, "Yes, sir." <laughs> but, well, they hadn't told me it was O'Hagan. So he answers the phone, and I go, "Hello, um, sir. I, uh, I, Sister Mary never told me your last name, but I think I'm your wife's daughter." Like that. Back. She's on the phone. He goes. Ah. <laughs> He goes, are you married? Yes. He goes, uh, do you have children? I go, yes. I'm like this. My husband's like, what's he saying? What's he saying? Like that, you know? And then all of a sudden he goes, Cubs or socks? I go, socks. He goes, good job. Go, <laughs> so then all of a sudden Peg gets on and she goes. And I love that. It's in the book, too. Oh, yeah, I love that, they, yeah, that you yeah. put that all in the book. All these ones. And did you go to college? I go, yes, I did. I'm a teacher. So's my daughter. You know, that kind of thing. And, it and was that was awesome. the funny thing that, so when after they got off yeah. the phone, mommy called me. And I go, Mom, how'd it go? How'd it go? And and again, my mom is obviously in this like trance and not really digesting it all. And and I'm like, what'd she say? What'd she say? And she literally the first thing she's like, Well, her her name is Maggie. Her husband's name is Tom. She's a teacher. I go, Ma, are you kidding me right now? She's like, what? What? 
I go, Tom, Maggie, and a teacher? That's me. And then, and then again, you know, everybody that knows my mom, she's like, holy shit. Jesus Christ, Mickey! She starts yelling at my dad. Did you notice that? Tom and Maggie! Like, so that was like another 10 minutes off of the radar. Oh, of, like, it's just kind of digesting. So, it's yeah. like a bad movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was uh, unbelievable. So then I just asked, do you have any children? And she goes, yes, I have three boys and a daughter. And I go, I got three brothers and a sister like that, you know? Is that what you, is that? Oh, I absolutely oh, thought that. You know, so I absolutely awesome. thought that. And then when we got together with my family, I have a son and a daughter. Did you have uh, any other siblings? I, no, that, no, I had uh, Harry. Harry, okay. Harry. I had uh, brother Harry, and then I had lost a sister in, okay. at birth. So, so all of a sudden I was you like, gained holy family. Holy family. Holy. And I told my kids and I sat them down. I go, guys, I have to tell you something. And Alex goes, what, what, what did you find? I go, and then I tell them, you've got 11 new cousins. <laughs> <laughs> They're going crazy, just crazy. I go, and your brother, they all play sports. <laughs> 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 and my kids, I mean, it was never hesitation. Yeah, never hesitation. Really just, oh I my God, when are we going to meet him? Blah, 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 blah. I want to give Mary some credit on one thing, too. Is her first couple of words with my mom on yeah, the phone absolutely. were just absolutely beautiful because that's where my mom was most anxious. So, yeah. Did I do the right thing? Did I, you know? No, oh, I can't even imagine right? what that felt like. And this lovely woman says, thank you for giving me such a beautiful life. Oh. This first thing she said. See, now you're crying. Yeah, I know. See, now you're crying. Suck family. it up. <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> No, and, so that's, that was, and that was immediate acceptance. That was yes. what I said. Yeah. You know, yeah. We all had our back up. Like, oh. all right, what's the intent here? So. And I asked mom, we, you know, to piggyback off what Jim said. The first thing she said to mom was, "Thank you." I'm like, all right, she's all in, you know. Yeah. And, and it was, thank you for giving me this life. It had to be the hardest thing to do, but I appreciate it. And you know, and again, you could see this big exhale from my mother. Yeah. That was, yeah. you know, and again, you know, the greatness of my mother is just you know you know I, mi I wish she was up here today with us you know she's not she's still fighting the fight you know and i miss her she's still not here. being God here her. she you know? knows she knows yeah. and she knows. uh her greatness her greatness and my father's greatness is why this is all happening mm -hmm. today and uh we're blessed beyond belief and a lot of people here know my mother and father and have been in you know in, you know encountered them in some way or the other and uh at the end of the day, that's what this is about, and my beautiful sister here has been just an incredible blessing in our life. She really has. Well, and I, and I, I told Mary earlier, I said, if she had walked off a plane, I'm standing in Newark, she had walked off a plane, I said, oh my God, you look like an O'Hagan. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all look alike, you know. <laughs> Woman's the odd man out at the end here. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes out the story. That's oh, why you say one of those, like, yeah. not coincidence, so we took the first picture, group yeah. picture we took, we're all together, and above the top was the United sign. The United Airlines. United Airlines. Yes. That was the one in the that's book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one in the book. Together, I was like, over the top said I'm United. like, they must have stayed. Yeah. And yeah, no, come yeah. on, you guys yeah. are so yeah. not that really smart. We're not that. We're not that smart. We're not that smart. We gotta get them to sponsor us. That's, <laughs> That's right. Why Tom had the United? Right book. You guys are listening. <laughs> we want to sponsor this story. Yeah. United, and we're flying on United tomorrow. So there you go. And took the Dort from Ridgewood to write the book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Dort Dort guys ain't writing the book. And it's so worth. It's so worth saying Still because my husband is so like again the amazing man that he is. But I have to share the story too. Like on our way to see her. So again, we made contact in like September, October of 08, mm -hmm. and then we didn't meet until my, my 40th birthday in January. So we would, we would like email and send pictures and stuff, and we we're like, oh my, I remember the first picture, she's like, any resemblance? I'm like, I thought I was my mother's daughter. <laughs> I go, you're our mother's daughter. And as we're on the way to the airport, my husband, being his stoic, you know, smart self, he's like, you know, Mag, everybody's not in O'Hagan. Everybody's not loud and honey <laughs> and kissy. Everybody's not like you guys. I'm like, he's like, I just don't want you to be disappointed. I'm like, you know what? Excellent point. Excellent point. So we go in and we're again, we're all waiting and that whole thing happens. And then we see, I'm like, wait, is that her? And she's coming out with her flip phone, like videotaping, screaming. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> and my husband's videotaping. It literally looks at me like this. He's like, 
I got nothing. And just yeah. surrenders to it. And we're known as our hugger. Like we hug, we're big huggers. And she hugged me and almost snapped my back. <laughs> and I remember thinking, like, oh my God, this is what I do to everybody. Like I remember thinking, like, she was so us. It was such a she amazing moment. Good. But yeah, Tom tried to warn us, like that. Every and she's, uh, yeah. you yeah. can't beat the and, and the, the, greatest, nerd, the nature. There was a thing. great story. These guys are talking about. We want to know if she need, wants something for my mom or our backs yeah. are rough. We had nothing. So the whole, <laughs> <laughs> the whole Jersey thing. So we're at when the bowling alley for her birthday, right. and I went out on the lanes. I go, excuse me, can I have everyone's attention, please? And they're all like, what's going on with her? I go, you know what? I, I have to be honest with everyone before we go forward. And they're all like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we go. I'm really here. I, I need a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, what? And they're like, look at it. <laughs> and I go, I'm kidding. Because I saw the whole jersey wall. I'm like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And Sorry. then everybody says, she'll fit right in. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. They're like, ah, oh, that makes sense. But, but yeah. it was. That was the, actually, it was a huge icebreaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like, no, but like, there was still, there was still no tension, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, you know, are there ulterior motives, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. But yep. then, no, she fit right in. I, you know? I mean, you would have to think, like, all right, why all of a sudden she pops out of the blue? Who is this person? And, you know, what does she want? What's right. her ulterior oh, absolutely. motive? Absolutely. This, and, yeah. and, and just and, and so Mary weird. ran into that when she started her search. You want to tell her she ran into a couple oh, dead. Right? You ran into a couple dead ends with scammers. Oh, yeah. I had you know, scammers. Her mom. They, they said we live in Florida and your mother's in a nursing home, but you know we're running out. On, you know we really need your help. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was before I found them. And really? I had about two people saying that they they had my mother. That I think we have your mother. And I said, you know, and so I wrote back to the people when I got back and. After I've met them and I realized that they're the real deal, I wrote back. Yeah, you should be looking for money. You know, There's only one bag. With yeah. the shame. Yeah. Here's my here's my brother's address. Look them up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So how how Sad. was it when you finally realized? Okay, this is my mom. I'm going to see my mom. Oh. What did what did that feel like? I, I, obviously, there's so many different emotions. Well, my, my husband said, you know, why he, he calls me Maggie unless he's in Jersey, then he calls me Mary. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> but um, he said, Mags, you gotta go, you gotta go. And I said, do you want to come? And he said, you know, I would love to, but he goes, I think you gotta go. And I wasn't scared to come alone, but I said, you know, he, we both talked about it and be like, oh my god! And then this is my husband Tom. <laughs> You know, for the first time, and he said, I'm not going with that. He goes, I'm not going with that. <laughs> so he let me go, and I'm on the plane. I still remember it going to Newark, and I'm just looking around, and everybody, like, they don't know where I'm going. You know, I was just, I go, and then you start thinking, wow, everyone has stories, you know, to going. So I got off the plane, and it was the longest, and yet it's the shortest in Newark. It was the longest walk I'd ever had, you know. Sure, the jet way. And I'm coming down and coming down. My heart's beating. As Margaret said, I have a flip phone, you know. At the time, it was in. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm trying to figure Keep out how am I going to no, afford wasn't. this. <laughs> it's never been. No, Keep telling you something. <laughs> Maybe there's a blackberry in here. <laughs> but, uh, I come out, and I did. I had my bag, and I'm like this. And I'm going, oh, my God. I said some expletives, which said Tom, Tom knew I was in. And I was like, oh, my God. I can't believe there were... Like 11 or 12 yeah, of them. Like, yeah. I go, that's already triple my family, you know? And so I'm looking, I hit the area, and I turn. And Mom is standing there. Yeah. And I sat there and I thought, okay, I've, had, I've been going with my life. It's been awesome. And I thought, she's been thinking, and she told me later, thought about me every day. Every day. Every day. And I turn, I look at her, and she looks at me. And I go, oh, my God, with this poor lady to see me and know I am okay physically. I just ran up to her and I, I held her and I was just hugging her and hugging her and hugging her and then these guys all got, it was unbelievable. And Mick, Mick is sitting there with flowers Aww. and I was like, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Then they just all start gabbing and screaming and talking and they're all in this big bundle and then I guess we started walking together and they're all filming oh us from the they're back. The same oh my God, on. look at her! They built the same and they're, and they're just know. walking. It was just and ridiculous. it was never that's my stepsister. Yeah. It was never that's you know. It was like uh, we went that weekend. We were at their house and I'm sitting on the couch and Jimmy went by. I still remember and he and he, and he took on my head and and, he, and then Pat goes my sister is my sister Mary and then Michael would say and Margaret would say it. I said Margaret, how do you feel about this? Because you know these have been your brothers all your life and all of a sudden they're saying this is my sister and they're pointing to me and she said. Music to my ears, Mary. 
first thing out of her mouth. Yeah, it's because she grew up with these lugs. <laughs> All of a sudden, she got another sister. It's like, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Oh my! And it's her life partner. Yeah. 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 That's, <laughs> Mr. that's Mr. Luck. Yeah. <laughs> and then I told Michael, I said, we we kind of talked about your question about you know being the oldest. And I've been around Michael 13 years, and I told him, you are the oldest. You're an old fart. So <laughs> you can have the job. There's no problem. It's all about numbers. It's not about numbers. It's about how he's taking care of all these guys. We thank each other, you know, that we took care of each other. And, you know, because I missed their beginning, but they'll, we'll have our end with each other. So. And, and did your mom go through the story, or did you, re you, know, did you read it for the first I, I time think, as Tom I put it together? Tried, yeah, I don't know if she's heard the... Yeah, so I mean, as we were going through it, I would read her chapters yeah. at a time. Nice. Was this right? Was this wrong? And she would, and every time, every chapter I read to her, she would always just laugh. You're like, oh yeah, no, that did happen. That did happen. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad it did happen, Mark, because I wrote it down. You know? it's like, but uh, but yeah, and then when we put it all together, we just started reading to her, you know, like just bits and pieces. That's of it. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I have that's one beautiful. funny, really cool story with that. When she would go, we'll, we'll decide if it's cool. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a reasonable story. Um, I would read it to her at, up at the nursing home. And her memory is obviously fading really badly. But there was a, cer a certain session where they was talking about her dad teaching the kids songs. Yeah, the rebel song. The rebel song, whatever the songs were. Yeah. And she was really out of, not really catching it and whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm reading the, the lyrics and she starts singing, singing. it. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So like the power of the music and her yeah. father mm -hmm. brought her right to yeah. She was like right there like predicting whatever the next line was. In the yeah, movie. yeah. I love that. I love that you it shared that so in the beautiful. book. Yeah. That they put those, right, those little cool stories story. in the was book. Was that all right, Mike? That was a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd say cool, but it was a good story. <laughs> if, uh, one story that I want to share. When my, when my sister and myself and my mother, we went to Chicago went to, yeah, for the first that time. That March, right after yeah. we met. To visit so them, later, to visit yeah. their family. Oh, okay. right? I was out there on business. Mom and Margaret flew out. And, you know, we met everybody. They had a great party and everybody loosened up. We started, you know, getting after it a little bit. There's uh, well, the, the, the two brothers who Mike. are the twins. Mike, uh, Mike and Mark. Mike, Mike and Mark. This guy's like staring at us. He's yeah. Like, how, how old are they? They're Tom. My, my brother. Station. My brother-in-law Tom's yeah, Tom Bowlers, five. right? Yeah, so they're in their sixties, yeah. whatever. And they're looking at us, and they're looking at her, and, and he, I'm like, "Finally, I'm like, dude, what are you looking at? What's up?" Right? <laughs> and he goes, "Bring his horn thorn." He goes, "He goes, he goes, he goes, it all makes sense now." He goes, "It all makes sense now." What do you mean? He goes, "Well." You know, Mary, the, Mary's family, the Timmons, were very low-key, laid-back, really reserved and everything. But Mary, Maggie, they call her at the parties, was always crazy and going nuts, and we could never figure out why. <laughs> you know, after a couple cocktails, me and my sister my mom were loosening up. And he's like, it all makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> that nature the versus, the nature yeah, versus yeah, nurture, yeah, you know, yeah. all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Now we know why Mary was crazy, because of you. <laughs> so, and then my mom would say, my mom, I remember that point. Party, right? She's sitting there and everybody's, oh, yeah. which typically is pretty standard for my mother. If she's talking, everybody's kind of like, you know, like listens to her. And they're all sitting around her, like in awe of my mom. And my mom's like, you know, I gave her up. <laughs> like, Not all that. I gave her up. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Like, oh, yeah. like, I gave her up. I gave her away. My mom got special. <laughs> I'm flawed. I'm flawed. Get all, go get a drink or something. My friend's crying in the front row. Mom's like, great. I'm not that special. I'm not that special. I gave no, her away. That was that was a great event when the three of us went out yeah, there awesome. and we're at Mary's oh, house. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, so, so how was it? How was it for your side of the family, oh, your husband? And oh, loved it. Loved it. My husband Tom, you know, he's 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 like he's like that Tom. Yeah. So we have a bond. That one over there. We have, we have another that guy. Over there. That guy. What does that um, mean? He's awesome. What are you talking about? Yes, I know Jim. I know. But he is awesome. They. He goes. I've got. I've got three brothers now. I mean, the four brothers. It, it's like he loves it. He loves. It. He loves them, and they love him. And and I have to be a little bit more, you know, respectful of my husband because sometimes they go, Oh God, he's talking over and over. He's repeating the story. Shut up. He's great. We love him. 
Tommy. Okay, 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 fine, fine, fine. They call him Snappy. They call him Snappy. Yeah. Snappy. He, had a little, he looked good at, a, at my uh, son's daughter's wedding. He had a tuxedo. It was all Snappy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, called, I called him Snappy, and it yeah. stuck. You look, you look at Snappy. You look rather you Snappy it. today. Yeah. There you go. That snappy. was it. So my family was all in. They were all in. So it was awesome. Well, yeah. listen, guys. You know, again, I, I can't recommend this book enough. I called her Mary. Uh, there are so many other stories. What you heard here, uh, there, there's a lot of background of, of, of Margaret growing up in Ireland, in, in, in poor part of Ireland. It's not like, you know, she didn't grow up with a silver spoon in her mouth. You know, they grew up poor. Uh, how the whole thing came about, and she got pregnant, and, and, and you know, the, the, the bitterness of people in the town, that just, that thing just really struck, stuck with me. I mean, how, how the community just like kind of pushed her away and really forced her to leave. Yeah. And, and you know, then you look back and you say, you know what, thank God, because none of you guys would be here. Absolutely. We wouldn't be here. Absolutely. Short Waves would be here. Yeah. <laughs> you guys thank God Short for Waves that. is always here. <laughs> right. Thank God for Never that. goes away. Uh, but th there's so much, so much great family stories and even just the, the sweet stories of how the, the parents were with, with, with your mom and, 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 and how they, you know, and, and, and Mick and how, how they got together and, and just, you know, his strength for her. Yes. And and I and I appreciate you guys because you know every time you watch a sporting event you always see the, the, the athletes like love you mom love you yeah. mom yeah. love you you know yeah. hey give that some credit <laughs> you know the fact that he he, he stuck with her and, and he protected her and he he followed her lead and and yeah. you know he yeah. was the silent the silent giant behind oh, sure. behind your mom and 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 being able to pull you guys all together. And it's just awesome to see you guys here. And again, awesome to see all the other Ohio. Let's hear it for the O'Hagans. Uh, and, and, and make sure, make sure, make sure you guys come back March 13th, Sunday, March 13th, one o'clock. We're gonna do a book signing. We're gonna have Tom here. We're gonna have the O'Hagans here. We're gonna have the Fighting 69th here. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, so, so come back. He's gonna sign books. Uh, and 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 I, I wish I wish you all the best as, as your family. I mean, you've quadrupled your family. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and now you have a reason to go to Chicago. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Flo. Thank Thanks, Flo. Thanks, Flo. Uh, thank and, you. And, 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 Tom, I, I appreciate awesome. you taking the time. You know, it's five years oh, in the making. And and please, when you see your mom. Yeah. From just say God bless you, thank you for for sharing it, and and if, if you if anybody that's listening or watching, if you were to say anything to them that has this kind of a story that they've held, that that they're afraid to share, that that they're they don't want to you know, for fear of how people might re what would you guys say to them? What would you say to anybody that's listening or watching? The truth always sets you free. Not to sound so cliche. But it literally does, and 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 you uh, saw that in your mom. Ah, uh, yeah. Like the phys like physically, mm -hmm. never mind like emotionally. And she was freed, and and you know the self hate. I hate to say that, but it was a guilt. Was, a lot of guilt. It was so a tremendous it was amount so of guilt. So guilt ridden, but the truth will set you free. And we know that our scenario is very unique. We do, and we're blessed, and we work at it. Um, but it's true, like the truth will set you free. Don't worry about what everybody else the, the, is doing. It's the key the key line in the whole book is when uh, Peg is, you know, proposed to, to Peg, I'm sorry, when Mick proposed to Peg, and then she yeah. was so scared. Yeah. She writes her mom, and her mom's like, don't start your life off on a lot. Yeah. Like, that's so that true. Was, that and was I, big. If you want to talk about it, like, that could be Make with anybody. That could thing. be anybody in the world. Like, don't keep on lying, that's what you're saying. Face it, and then there's nothing that's too great. You always say that, right? Nothing no too great too big. that the mm -hmm. family can't handle. And right. we work through this, for, whatever it is, we'll get through this together. And that's what it's all about. And that's why I, that's why I call this a family love story. I mean, it really That's is, great. you know, for all the turmoil and everything else that, that happened, the fact that that family, you know, rallied together and the fact that, that your mom shared that with, with, with this guy that she liked yeah. and, and proposed to her. And he, she didn't accept the first time, right? If I remember, right? She, no. she yeah, was no. like, eh. A couple times, no, she said no. She said no, right? right. Uh, and, and the fact that she had the guts enough to risk losing him yes. by telling the story, but you know, it's it's again a cliche. Love conquers all. Yeah. If if there's love there, right. you know, you're going to be able to beat these things. Right. And and I feel like that's what this book is about. That's what you guys here at this table are about. And and hopefully, if you guys listening and watching, uh, you know, that's 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 what family's about. It's about it's about 
it's about love. It's about being together. It's about getting through the tough times. Absolutely. And and, and I encourage anybody to, to to pick up this book, read this book, and and hopefully if you do have those kind of secrets and those kind of things that you've been afraid to share, and and you know, and, and God bless you, Mayor, because if if they didn't you share did. the story, he you wouldn't be sitting you. here right. in short ways. I know. I know. <laughs> and so, I just want to give extra credit to Tom yes. too. Yeah. Because him sticking with it and trying to corral my mother <laughs> into Never easy. bringing it out and you know working through it and being the blessing that you are to us uh, and absolutely doing that is just yeah. and the other thing too like my, my sister Margaret says it beautifully everything always comes back to Hawthorne the support that we've gotten from this town and our friends on Facebook and buying and, and moving this book has been unbelievably um, yeah. overwhelming like yeah. everyone's everyone's yeah. buying it and they're sharing it and they're moving it around and they're all coming up with different reasons things about the book that maybe I don't even know if you realize like yeah you're right there's so many things that people are writing like, oh I didn't realize that oh I didn't know that story but I have an adoption issue also yeah you know and it made me feel strong but like it's it's having so many ripples yeah. of incredible effect across so many people yeah awesome. and, and I'm telling you stay tuned guys because this will we're, we're gonna make sure this becomes a movie <laughs> I'm serious because it's one one of those things that I, I, it, it read like a movie to yeah, me. Definitely. It read like like or a just play a, or a play. <laughs> it's a beautiful, a beautiful story because it's everyone's story. Everybody has this type of a story, yeah, no matter absolutely. what the struggle is. You know, it's it's and and so stay tuned. This, right. It's going to happen. We're going to make sure it picture, happens. Look at that picture of my mother right there. That's not determination and will yeah. and fight. Strong lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's the best. Yeah. She's still fighting like a warrior right now. Yeah, she, she, she was here with us, sitting next between her two daughters right now and that's yeah sucks that she's not but how, how old is your mom now 84 84 god bless her like stuff, the stuff that she, she went through yeah, yeah. And, so. and even the fact that she took care of your dad for how many was it 13 years 16 yep. 16 years that's a different book yeah, yeah right 16 years yeah, i'm sure that Tom. wasn't all roses and uh yeah oh no, no. <laughs> yeah thanks brother for doing uh, it. Thank thank you. and thank you uh, thank for you, for you guys for being here at glen rock tv and and again i'll just say to our to our mother, a testament to our mom. Right here, everybody else sitting here. Hey, let's hear it one more time for the O'Hagans. Come on. That's for Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Tom. I came down here to support you. I mean little small bits of this story, but this thing blew me away for a couple of reasons. When you know my story. I have a, my youngest of four is a doctor, and my wife and I got her, in, uh, we went to China, picked her up in uh, 2003, and uh, one of my oldest daughters went, and I learned at that time not to hide stuff. Right. So I brought a, I brought a video camera and videoed the birth of my daughter to our family. Aww. She just went to college and her college her roommates found it online and they showed it to the whole hall. She's proud of who she is and she knows she's my daughter and my wife's daughter. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, love you, you're the best, brother. And hey, I love you guys. Uh, I want to thank I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And again, you know, pick up the book. It, it, it's a great read. You're not going to be disappointed. Uh, it, it's not only it's not only a great Irish story. It's not only a great immigrant story. It's not only a great family story. It's it really is a great love story. And and I thank you guys for sharing it. I thank Mary. I thank you. Absolutely. And by the way, so I'm going to say this tomorrow. Make sure you get to the airport early. <laughs> I'm going to take you to the United Club. And we're gonna sit down and you know. Hey, hey, I love hey, it. Hey, hey. Well, what are we gonna do in the United States? We're gonna either. celebrate. We're gonna celebrate. We're gonna celebrate the book. Why don't you just pick her up so I don't have to take her to the airport? <laughs> hey. Wait, wait a minute. No, no, wait. Wait, if you're taking her to the airport, you can pick me. Oh, I was gonna take an Uber. I was gonna take an Uber. And hey, a shout out to Shoreways again. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank, awesome. thank you all for listening. Thank, thank you. you guys for watching. And uh, be well, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day.
town There's a railroad running through it Like I'm taking there and moving Can I take you there tonight? Well, there's a one-night town All I know It's the time of the day Train whistle blown The street knows my footsteps Since they started growing Mother teaching me right from wrong Brother's record beggar Teaching me the songs My guitar and a rock band Thought I was long gone She walked into a local dive Me along the juke Singing tonight, tonight Shots of whiskey and a beautiful smile And she slides on down 